How y'all doing there, folks? My name is Aberdeen Washington, and I'm a proud American and a terrorist fighter. That's right. Hey, give me another beer, bitch. Now with the day been lighting, comes to town. I'ma drop a deuce, swipe it up with this towel. I'm on my lawn, sit on the couch. I'ma watch some football. I pray to the Lord the Cowboys win and beat the hell out of them damn Redskins. Call up the boys, get drunk as shit. Goddamn right, I'm a mirror. I'm American. Got a picture of Reagan above my fire. Next to the deer, I shot with my rifle. And all right, hell yeah, I support them. No pro choice, no abortion. Mexicans send them back over the border. Right on home to Samoa. Wherever they come from, they're taking our jobs. Eating our hamburgers, taking our jobs. They're taking our jobs. I see them in the field, I'm taking their head off. I hate my job and I hate my boss, but I love my country. And I pray to God that the Cowboys win. Fuck yeah, Romo! If the Cowboys win. That's right, that's right, that's right. Come on! Everybody, just clap your hands. If you love our country, if you love our land, that's right. And if you're not clapping your hands, you're a terrorist and you eat sand. Sandwiches. The day been loud and comes to town. I'ma drop a deuce like my poop with a snap on my lawn. Sit on the couch and I'ma watch the football. I pray to the Lord the Cowboys win and beat the hell out of them damn Redskins. Tell the boys, drunk as shit, goddamn right I'm American. I'm American fucking kid. I'm John McCain and Sarah Palin. I know you lost out there. It was a tough one. There's still two Mavericks in my books. Don't worry about it. Now listen, Peyton. I heard you like beer. Me too. I don't have a six pack, but I got a beer bong on my pants. What do you say we go get shit faced in a helicopter and kill a moose? America, the chosen. Guns, explosions. McDonald's, bowling. You don't like it? We exploit you. Pop a pill. Get a boner. Hell yeah. Tony Romo. And I got so damn cute, I want to stack his boner and ride him broke back on the way to Wyoming. No homo. Psych. Hey, I said no homo. Hey, fuck terrorists. I mean, like, I don't want to fuck a terrorist. Guys, I'm kidding. I like Romo. I don't like Romo. I said fuck terrorists, not I want to fuck a terrorist. You wouldn't. If you caught Bin Laden, you wouldn't give him one in the butt. For America, if you said no homo right after you did it, it doesn't care if it's terrorist. Hey, little Aberdeen, come in here. Yeah. Hey, come see the National Family Anthem. Come on. USA, 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 USA. Hey, hey, USA. I'm a mayor Post politics. It is February 5th, 2014. Thank you for joining us. Liberty Movement Radio.com, Raz Radio Live.com tonight for the Wednesday show, as always. Uh, man, all right. Well, I, I, I never know how to start a show, man. I always, I, anyway, I'm at J Rev Studios. We're live and loud from J Rev Studios tonight. And uh, we got some good work done tonight, all that good stuff. Um, We've got Rob Mathias on here in a handful of minutes, and we will... I've been waiting, especially for our Raz Radio listeners, to get um, our our guest in the second hour on, Josh Wiley, 
Um, just a pistol, dude. And, I mean, he makes me, more than anybody else, and no offense, Rob, but they're, like, he makes me so good at what I'm doing already. Like, I just feed off of him and, like, all of... Josh will bring up all the stuff you thought you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Very but, true. But uh, with that being said, we've got um, you know we've got that coming up in the second hour too. And big news, yo um, yo yo, trip. I- I'm really happy for you, man. And I'm gonna let you finish. But Liberty Movement Radio is one of the best radio stations of all time. It, and uh, of all time, trip. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna accept my reward or award now, I should say. But uh, that and Raz Radio Live too, of course, one of the best. And uh, that's not a slight. That's not a slight against um, Raz Radio either. But we do have big uh, news regarding Liberty Movement Radio tonight. So we will drop that uh, sometime after we let Rob go. <laughs> Dude, you don't need to do that with your mouth. I've got a button bar over here. We, however, I don't have a dropping bomb on my button so bar. I so I did have... Wait, right. wait. You like talking about my mouth, don't uh, you? Shut the fuck up. All right. All right. We're proud Americans. <laughs> All right. It is Post Politics. LibertyMovementRadio.com. RazRadioLive.com. Check it out. And the sad part is, is that most people seem to have been indoctrinated to believe that bullshit only comes from certain places, certain sources. Advertising, politics, salesmen, not true. Bullshit is everywhere. The NWO Fighter, the show that gets America its balls back. And you've got to put your bodies upon the gears and upon the wheels, by all the apparatus, and you've got to make it stuff. And you've got to win the game to the people who run it, to the people who own it, that unless you're free, the machine will be prevented from working at all. I don't want to put a violent connotation on it, but this is a war zone. I'm talking about my life and yours. If you're not on some government list by now, you're doing something wrong. After eight years of lies and hypocrisy, people up this guy. Leads me to a very disturbing question. How far up your ass does this guy's dick have to be before you realize he's fucking you? It's good for kids, too. I mean, you're born absolutely free, except for laws of nature. Those, if you drink, you get drunk. That's a law. If you, if you get old, you die. That's a law, too. If you sit on a tap, you will bleed from the ass. These are the only laws that you're born with, and any government just fucks you out of that type of freedom. If you're not involved by now, you are just as much at fault as our oppressors. I was terrified when my doctor told me that I had a unique and interesting personality trait. It's post politics with Trip here. All right, everybody. You know what time it is. It's what we do over here. Uh, much thanks to the guys that come on before us here at Liberty Movement Radio, uh, Godless Liberty. I, I, uh, I just called to their show tonight, and these guys—they're not—they're not too—they're not too. Uh, they're not too um, I, I guess they're green, what we would call green. You know, they're—I'm they're, still a light green, so I. Well, they—they they, they, they have—they have doubts, but they have a really good show, man. Oh, dude, they are amazing. I love listening to them, you know, and and and, and I. I love them because as a man of faith, I can laugh at their jokes <laughs> because right. they're actually funny. You know what I mean? They're not yeah. just, I'm mad. They're, they're, hey, doesn't this seem stupid? And then you're like, yeah, yeah it does, doesn't it? <laughs> right. No, I, and they pull out like all of our, like what we would, you know, take that's serious and run with, even in a comical sense, you know, they, 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 they do, uh, you know, especially for our Raz radio listeners. It, we know that the kind of uh, the kind of radio that we listen to. It's like pick, pluck out the most absurd uh, articles that you can find about the craziest shit, and that's what we're running with. And that, I mean, that's what they do, and they do it. They do it pretty damn well. And uh, not 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 only that, but you know, we found out they're 
not too far from us, right? Down yeah, there, Saint Cloud. Yeah, I'd say they're like a good hour and a half from us. You know, that's not that far at no, all. No, man, they're in Saint Cloud, dude. They're like, uh, you know, south side of Orlando. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's like an hour. You know, it's like an hour, I guess, from where we we sit. But uh, well, with that being said, um, we do have um, Rob Matthews. Uh, Worked with Free State Project and uh, host and producer of the Rebel Love Show um, out of Chicago. Now we don't get too many people out of out of Chicago. Well, that's because nobody wants to admit they're from there since Obama got elected. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> I always thought that before they found the cause of freedom and liberty, they had too many Polish sausages lodged in their throat. But, uh, you know, what? You're just having a heart attack there, Rob. You really have been practicing your uh, <laughs> oh, impersonations. Yeah. Oh, no, like, I, I, that was actually off the cuff. I didn't practice that one today. I was more of well, a... don't pat yourself on well, the back. No, 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 yeah, no, no, no. I was more... Uh, I, I, I started with, like, a New York-type uh, deal, and that sort of morphed into, like... I was like, you know what? People that can do a good Christopher Walken kind of have my bet. You know what I mean? Like, And I'm like, I really... I do voices, but I really need to work on my uh, Christopher Walken. And the thing... the Also, the other thing with Christopher Walken is, is that um, you have to... You have to uh, sort of harness the persona, you know, like uh, like something like okay, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, all right. But and, and it might not be great, but you will get it probably a hell of a lot more than the listening audience because you can see my face and and you know be right here with me. But you know, it's like uh, you know this guy Christopher Cantwell uh, out of New York. He's crazy. Uh, the man will kill you, clearly. Something to that nature, you know. You uh, I, I was with it right up until the end. Like, it, like you kind of lost it at the end. Uh, yeah, you know. But was, he, I was feeling it, you know. Like, th And then he had... That and I'm just kind of going off the cuff. He you know? had the like, ring. It, right. Shoved in his ass for four years. Right, but you have to be able to harness that. Per, like in any given situation, you can't just do bits from movies. You know, that's yeah. what I did at the lunchroom table in middle school, you know, that got oh, the yeah. laughs was re redoing movies. You kind of have to, you know, and I was just going off the cuff there. But anyway, I'm, I'm holding our guest up. So oh, I'm, we're going to go. Is ahead. he on? No, uh, we're going to go ahead and get a hold of him right now. Um, All right. I'm going to go and like talk to people and stuff. All right, all right man. Later. Oh, shit. Oh, great job there. X lax. Plug me back into the wall. <laughs> hey, Rob, how you doing tonight, yeah, buddy? How's it going? Uh, n nothing. We're just, uh, you know, our little makeshift studio over here. And, uh, you know, we're trying to reach wall outlets, and not everything is as long as we need it to be. And <laughs> that's what <laughs> you, she you, said. you understand. <laughs> that's what she said. Sure, yeah. So what's going on, man? It's been a while since we talked last. Uh, I'm enjoying New Hampshire like it's no one's business. I love it up here. When now? When did you uh, finally take off? Of course, from the Chicago land area. Uh, what? Uh, when? What? Let, let me let me uh, sort of set this up right. I guess uh, you know okay. you were already active before getting out there, of course. And uh, you know what? What made you decide to say, "Dude, this is something I just got to be a part of," and it, everything that led to you getting up there? Because uh, you know you you do good work and. Um, you know, and I guess I should say, how does that work out? Um, relocating because I'm somebody that's not, I'm not going to say I'm terrified of doing that, but I've got a lot of stuff in my life that I kind of have to be rooted where I am. Uh, and with that being said, you know, I, I know it's not hard to pick up and move to anywhere and, and just say like, I'm going to go be a part of this thing. I moved. Well, for me, I don't have much family and whatnot back in Chicago anymore, so I didn't okay. really have much left to uh, keep me rooted. So I understand it's a huge problem with, for other people. Right. Uh, I really made the decision a year ago just following all the activism going on here and uh, the momentum of all the people moving here. Uh, befriended a lot of people, you know, everyone in the Liberty Movement, everyone friends, everybody. Uh, made some good friends uh, here before I moved, which helps a lot. And... Uh, on top of that, I got lucky because I uh, I got a transfer from my day job, so I didn't have to find, I didn't have to look for work. 
Cool, so cool, got, absolutely. Got transfer, everything just kind of fell in place, and I'm like, well, hell, I'm just going to make the, I'll, you know, I made the jump, I made the move, sold everything in, at uh, at home, sold everything in my apartment, bought a plane ticket, next thing I know, I'm here. Right, I've got something called children and ex-wives, so uh, it's, <laughs> you know, that's... I'll hold you back a little bit. Right, right, and, and don't get me wrong, I've never... Uh, we live in Florida, man, and I've never gotten used to the summers down here. I've been down here eight years, and it's like this six-month summer kills me every year. I mean, it, it's a whole nother d- deal of the opposite fashion of what pretty much everybody else in the country deals with. But <laughs> regardless, you know, it's uh, – uh it, by the way, how's it been treating you up there uh, as far as getting used to that? I mean, I know it's not too – too much far removed, uh, but um, the weather-wise, I'll be honest, it's kind of warmer than uh, leaving Chicago. Really? When I left, when I left Chicago, it had like the whole like polar vortex where it was like negative forty wind chill. The, win- the windy city, my friends. <laughs> I-, I land and it was twenty degrees above uh, zero, so like it-, it was like a thirty degree jump for me. So I was like, God, oh, this is a heat wave. <laughs> That's great. So, uh, what what have you been involved with since you moved? And, and uh, you know, I picked up a, another affiliate uh, recently as well of some of our buddies down here in Florida, and uh, and most of those guys are from like New York, you know, and or, or at least uh, up north, I guess you could say originally. But um, you know, uh, we're talking free state project. If you don't know, um, for some of our listeners. You know, basically a bunch of activists getting together saying we're all moving to New Hampshire and we're sort of just going to take this a state by state deal. And since the inception of that, we've seen, um, you know, the Blue Ridge State Project, which if I was going to relocate to do something like that, it would definitely be um, the Blue Ridge State Project in North Carolina, Asheville centered. And uh, I, I just love it there, though. It's just a very peaceful place to me. And I've been there a handful of times. But, um, you know, what? How, how's everything been going, you know, as far as um, your personal efforts, I guess you could say, you know, it, not, not just being a part of this Free State Project, but, you know, everything that you were doing before you moved? Um, well, for, I'll be honest, I didn't do a hell of a lot when I was back in Chicago because I, I, I did, like, a lot of Ron Paul campaigning and whatnot. Right. And I literally felt like I was just banging a head against the wall there, you know. And it wasn't something that I felt like at, at one point I was like, why am I even trying here? Because it's not going to make a difference here. And I kind of like six months ago to a year, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going like, to focus on eventually planning for the move. And I planned for a long time and finally I made it. Uh, but uh, there I kind of gave up there because I felt like there's no reason to do anything there. Uh, since I've been here, I've only been here since January 25th. And wow, so and you're like, like fresh out without a doubt. You're you're uh, about as green as they come to the to Yeah, the yeah. State. You know what's crazy is I've only been here a short time. I've already met like five new movers that have moved since I got here. Wow. Which kind of, they come up to me as if like I'm some sort of like uh, person that's been here for years. I'm like, man, I just landed two weeks ago. What are you talking about? <laughs> right, you I'm know? still trying to figure it out um, myself. Yeah, but I'll, I'll be honest. The infrastructure of the activism here is insane. The fact that, like, I don't know what it's like in Florida, but I've never seen, like, you know, se- activist centers, you know, like, s- where somebody owns, like, an entire building. and it, it Like a VFW, de- well, like, down here, like, don't get me wrong, like, down here we have people that rent out VFW halls and things like that, you know what I mean? Um, and, and sometimes that happens, and or, like, uh, you know, the ca- Campaign for Liberty events that, that um, me and the guys at JREV here, we go to and stuff, you know, we... Uh, meet once a month and rent out the top floor of the of uh, you know this this restaurant here, which is sort of more of like a a banquet hall type deal. So you know, I mean, there, there's ways to go about it, but yes, you're right as far as something that's like literally dedicated to it, like there's, activist there's center. Two, there's <laughs> I mean, two centers just in Manchester alone. Uh, obviously, there's a CAC in uh, Keene. Um, I know there's others throughout the uh, state as well that I haven't had a chance to even go visit yet. Um, and the, the networking here, everyone up here, I mean, there's already like, what, 1,500 people that have already moved. The networking is just insane. Like, I've I've been here less than two weeks. I've met at least 300 people. Wow. You know, it's just, and it's like, I can't remember everyone's name of all the free staters I've met. going Because there's, there's always some event going on. Um, 
besides just you know like activism and stuff, but you know just like social events, like a party or uh, like a Bitcoin meetup or whatever. But there's always almost every day there's something going on. I'll go somewhere else. I'll meet like you know 20, 30 new people that I've never met before. Um, that are all here for the same reason. So my mind is just blown by the amount of people that are just taking part in what's going on here. I think it's like there's a like huge momentum uh, building just because there's so much going on and the infrastructure is like something I've never even witnessed before. And, and for me personally, and of course, it's just something that quite frankly, you know, due to my other reasons that I, I, I couldn't really just uproot my whole life and go do that, even if I wanted to. Um, I, I just couldn't do it, but, uh, I don't know. It seems more like, uh, to a certain extent, a double edged sword, um, in a way. And what I mean by that is, is that I think that it's great, you know, that everybody can say, I would love for everybody to pick, um, you know, of course, personally for me, like, you know, Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, some, somewhere in that area, uh, to say, I, this is the new free state project. And, and I mentioned that with what they're trying to do a blue state there in Asheville, North Carolina. But, um, it's, uh, it, it's great to have people centrally located. However, I feel like, uh, you know, th there's, there's a certain aspect that's missed out because I think people's independent efforts within their own, uh, towns and cities are, are a big deal too. And of course, you know, we need all types of folks from all you know, all walks of life, but well, I mean, it, it's to me is if the Free State Project can inspire other people to do something else in sure. their neighborhood, all the better. Like, I would love to see a uh, better competition. I would love to see Blue Rage blow up and have more people there too. You know, Texas seems to be more and more activists doing things in Texas as well. So I love to see all this competition around the country. Right, I, and I wouldn't even call it you know competition, but well, it's not you, friendly. It's not competition. I know, I know what you meant, but. Um, inspiring everyone to do something, you know, to do something. Sure, sure, sure. Because, I mean, as somebody, like, I'll admit, and I haven't told this story in a long time, but, uh, uh, well, he's sitting right here, but I guess it's not a big deal and everybody knows or whatever. But, um, you know, I, I, it wasn't until I got linked up with people online that I even started to find people in my area. Because let's be honest, you know, coming from – you know, unless you live in New Hampshire, pretty much, you're not going to meet somebody that's a free stater or somebody that is down for the cause of freedom and liberty uh, at the grocery store. Or, or yeah. you know, it's very hard. You wouldn't come across these people in your normal day to day life. Um, so, in that sense, it's bad. However, you know, I I got hooked up, and we're best of friends now, and we got this company, and we got you know radio shows and the whole the whole bit. But, you know, I, I found these guys that were in my area, you know, and it was Robert and Matt, and Matt had a post or whatever when Robert had to go and get... Uh, what? Well, yeah, he got locked up for a little bit uh, over some, you know, family court stuff or whatever, and I was like, what do you need? You know, I'm I'm here, you know, and it was the first time and I got a hold of Matt and then it, it we've been best friends ever since, you know, so it's, it's good to, I don't know, it's good to be geographically located. It's good to be kind of spread out too, you know, I, I, I but personally, like, I really wish I would have ran into these guys five years ago at a, you know, in a grocery store line somewhere, not, not having to go online to find out that they live, you know, just a few minutes from my house. You know, well, I found um, I got hooked up with a few different uh, end caps, and whatnot in the Chicagoland area a few months back, just because of you know Facebook groups and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Up. But even then, I'm kind of like, okay, there's five of us. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, there's fifteen hundred over here. Like I'm, I wanna, I'm still gonna go. It's nice that I meet you guys, but I'm, I'm still gonna head off. And that's why uh, doing what we do on the, on the journalism aspect of the deal has been so uh, so cool, I guess you could say, is that, um, you know, we get down for a lot of different causes, whether it's personal to us or whether we have somebody else in our area that, that's doing something on a major level. We get to cover that and we get to be a part of that. You know, we get to go to these uh, Campaign for Liberty events. We go to our uh, – ban the red light camera protest that happens literally right up the road from my house um, once a month, you know, so there's yeah, there are no red cameras up. There are no uh, red light cameras up here. Awesome. Don't have to protest. Right. Yeah. 
And, but, but, you know, and I see videos and I've never been, you know, I've never been to New Hampshire. I've been, uh, probably damn. Uh, yeah, no, New Milford, Connecticut, I believe is about as far as I've gone North, but, um, I actually never visited here before I got here. Really? You, you know, just had no, yeah. you're just going into it blind, man. <laughs> blind. Like, um, I'm actually starting up a show soon. Well, we kind of already had it called the Rebel Love Show, but we're going to restart right. it uh, with a studio. We're gonna, there's, there's a studio we can actually rent out here, which is amazing, uh, for other podcasters and whatnot. But, um, me and Joel Valenzuela, we actually, uh, kind of became good friends way back, like six, nine months ago via Facebook. He did the same thing. But he drove across country. He'd never been to New Hampshire either. He drove across country. I actually uh, put him up in my apartment. First time I met him was like put him up in my apartment in Chicago. Um, but he did the same thing. He got here back in September, and I got here uh, just now. But like, we're not the only ones. There's multiple people I've met. Like, yeah, I never, I never uh, been to New Hampshire until I just flew in or just drove up the move. Uh, there's, I'm not. I know I'm not the only one that's done it. Right, right. And um, it's. I don't know. It's a trippy ride, man. All walks you only a lot. Live once. You only live once. You might as well uh, live for something. Sure, sure. And I think everybody does. I mean, you know, give it our audience especially. I know everybody is doing their own part, you know. I mean, we've got people that just stick to radio. We've got people that just stick to activism. You know, it, it takes all types. And it's really... I don't know. I don't know if it's like my OCD or my, uh, you know, whatever it is, but like any job I've ever been to, and this is, this is no different. Um, I feel like I have to know all different aspects in order to have a good time and have a well-rounded, uh, know-how about it all. So, um, it's been, it, it, it's quite strenuous. I wish that I could just get behind like one cause and, and stick to it, but I know too much and, uh, I, I, I'm I'm way too uh, OCD about it to to just let some of this stuff go. Um, I did get you on. We are making Porkfest the experience documentary uh, that launched about a week week and a day or two ago. And um, you know we're we're really trying to get this done. This is our biggest effort that we've tried to do yet. And I know it's kind of hefty for our first go run, but. Uh, I, I really don't think it, it's lack of uh, tools really is what we're what we're missing. I don't think our ambition could be any higher. I don't think our our know-how with the technology available to us could be any higher. It's it's time to take that next step. So, you know, uh, I would love to see a pork fest documentary. You know, um, from all the small videos I've seen at pork fest, it'd be a great. Uh, documented to everyone that should see. And, and that's really our goal behind it because let's be honest, we can all go to YouTube and check out this person's speech or that person's speech or whatever, uh, but we're literally talking about, you know, an hour and a half to a two hour film that is filming, you know, it's, it's people, ourselves included, and anybody that makes the trek to Pork Fest, you know, please give us your ride to, um, you know, it, it, even if it's a 30 second clip of you saying, Hey, I'm headed to pork fest, da, 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 you know, whatever, like we'll, we'll use it if you want us to, um, for this. And, uh, but, but we're making the track up, we're filming the whole deal, you know, the ride up, everything that goes on there. And I, I really don't think that it's quite been captured the way that we're hoping to do this. And, you know, I completely understand what you're saying about that because coming here, the first thing that really threw me uh, a curveball or something, something I really wasn't uh, expecting, which I kind of tried and been documenting it for the last since I got here. Uh, I've been posting a bunch of stuff about it. Is the culture here, the community here? You know, a lot of people always you always see like an activism video or a speech or a podcast or something like that. But you but get the chance to make that your day to day, is what you're saying. Yeah, I pretty much have just been like, whatever I'm doing, I, I make a post about whatever I'm going, um, you know, who I'm hanging out with, just doing this. Like, you know, it's just going out to, like, you know, out to a party or something like that or a Bitcoin meetup or whatever it might be, just talking about what's going on. And I get people, like, messaging me saying, you know, I never knew this, your, uh, the life in New Hampshire was like this or I didn't know about this. And, you know, how do I get there? And I'm just uh, going to keep posting about whatever I'm doing around here, just uh, so other people that are watching the Free State Project kind of have a kind of an idea of what the culture is like, not just speeches and not just uh, you know YouTube videos about activism. 
Right, because, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, uh, you know, personally, in my opinion, not enough people get ambitious enough to try to do things on a bigger level other than, you know, I, I, I don't get me wrong, social media and online activism does a great deal to get the word out and have important, interesting conversations with people and sort of push the conversation of whatever is being posted about at the time. But, you know, if you don't have something else going on, if you're not a free stater, if you're not a radio per, a person or, uh, you, you know, whatever it might be, if you're not making YouTube videos, if you're not doing protest, all that stuff, like, I really encourage everybody to get out there and do it. It's a totally different side of the coin. And quite frankly, we need more people openly speaking out because, honestly, when you're online, you're kind of preaching to the choir at that point, you know? Yeah. One thing I would love to see up here, uh, I know there's actually been a lot of talk about it. There's just not enough funding for it. Uh, but just like with anything, there's not enough funding. Yes. Um, <laughs> we Trust me, we know. <laughs> yeah. Um, I see a reality TV show based off of like a lot of different activists in New Hampshire. Um, a lot of day-to-day -day lives and throw it together in some sort of uh, reality TV show that would always be occurring. Like, you know, every week there'd be a new episode about these people, what they're doing that week and whatnot. That, yeah, that would be cool. And there's a lot of uh, resources to be had as well. You know, I mean, I know you guys got people, you know, when, when you have that many people tying their resources together, it could be um, a great thing. Now, uh, and I know you only been up there two weeks or whatever, and, and of course you're sort of, uh, you know, being, being ambitious about your time there, uh, however long that lasts, you know, whether you end your days out there or whether it's, you know, again, experience or wh wherever life takes you. But, um, I, I, I want to talk about, uh, is the free state project an exclusive club or is it people are located there and that's kind of the bubble. So it's more concentrated because I, I feel this is just me and this, and I'm not trying to crap all over it at all, but, um, I, I, I want to kind of say that, uh, it, it, it's sort of an exclusive club type deal, you know, like, I don't know if it's that more things are happening outside that I don't think a lot of people that are doing the free state thing pay attention to, or that I've seen people move up there. We've got a guy that used to be, you know, part of our individual Liberty society, head those up, you know, give his speeches and he's moved up there and we've hardly heard anything from him. And that's just on an individual basis, like with him, you know, and we, and we hardly hear anything out of him anymore. Um, and, and while I think, uh, you know, concentrating on New Hampshire, if you're there is great cause that's your local area. But, um, I, I would hope that that strong of a community wouldn't fall out of touch, not saying that it is or it isn't, but wouldn't fall out of touch with what everybody else has got going on across the country. Yeah, I, and, I, and you're I a testament that. to that right now. So you're, you know, no, no, I, I hear what you're saying. And, um, I, I, I will be honest, like once you're here, you really don't, you don't care about the outside world, and and that sounds no, harsh. No, you kind of care about like living free here, and it's like everyone else right. come here. Get about the rest, you know. Just focus. On, that's kind of the purpose of it. Right. I get that. A lot of people kind of just remain focused on changing things here, um, which is admirable. I don't want to. I don't want to paint myself into a corner here because it's admirable and it's cool. And you know what? That's that's you guys' life that you do day in and day out, and that's awesome. But you know, I, I also would like to think that um, people are uh, still paying attention to what the rest of us are doing because, let's be honest, you know, if, if everything else goes to hell, I really don't think that um, if we could pile every single activist that's out there into New Hampshire that we could fend off the, the heathens <laughs> that are trying to attack us at the end of the day. If we were all, you know, sta stood arm to arm, that would still be a difficult thing to overtake. So I, I just don't want to downplay anybody else's uh, efforts that are going on in, in, all across the country and in some cases the world. Oh, no, no. If you, uh, obviously, you should do whatever you can wherever you are. I mean, if you plan on staying where you are, be active in that community. Right. Do whatever you can. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. Um, what I'm saying is, 
for me, it was a personal choice. I want it, besides the fact that it's a lot freer in New Hampshire and there's momentum for the movement in New Hampshire. At the same time, I really also moved, um, and you know, I want to be honest. I uh, I got tired of kind of feeling like the crazy person. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, and, it happens. Uh, trust me, <laughs> I get and it. Here, it's like I think I think I've run into maybe five people that aren't even familiar with the Free State Project since I've been here. Right. Um, like everyone, like I've. It's weird, especially like when going going to my day job. Going to my day job is like leaving the state. You know, it's in the state because I'm around all these people who aren't really. I mean, there's a lot of New Hampshire uh, that are you know Free State Project, uh, you know, people friends of the Free uh, Free State Project. But even then, those people and the people that are here for the FSB, I'm hanging out with all these people, and I go to work. I'm like with normal natives, and it's it's bizarre because they. Uh, the accent they have, the uh, the way they're, it's it's like I'm living a double life. It's really weird. It's really right. Weird. I'm not used to being around so many like-minded people. Where like that's the norm. Right. I'm sure that's uncomfortable. It seems like a, a crazy Twilight Zone episode or some something like that. But uh, you know, and, and uh, don't like I said, I, I'm not trying to do anything. I'm merely asking questions. Uh, and, oh yeah. But. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, what we're trying to do is is good, and of course we support everybody that's gone up there and been a part of that. Um, has been great, and uh, hopefully, you know, as far as the Free State Project goes, I think that maybe our final product will be probably the biggest shining example for anyone to go join the free state project if they can you know or at least just make it to pork fest one year you know what i mean like i because i've never been but i've seen all the videos all the speeches everything else that's going on for the past handful of years and uh you know i'm sitting here going that's you know i i i would like to make that appealing for everybody to at least go be a part of that to have quote what we consider to be somewhat of a utopia for for a week out of the year you know and and, and everything that anybody else has brought back to me makes it sound like that like it's like that is hey you know what we fight hard but one week a year we all get together and get to live in the perfect place that we all you know somewhat envision I, I completely agree. Like I personally can't even wait for Pork Fest, and uh, I would love to see you guys document the entire thing there. I would love, I would love to watch that. Um, like one thing I'm doing is, like here, I'm just trying to document where I can and make videos about maybe you know what's going on here, trying to tell the rest of the world what's going on. Um, right. But uh, the community here, the community, the culture is something that I've, I don't think exists anywhere else. It's ver it's really unique, to say the least. That's I mean I've always of course and and I ask this of enough people and I probably it probably should be something that I ask every um, person that I interview because it's it it's so resounding to me. It almost seems like a lot of the people that uh, delve in this information and are a part of what we're a part of. Uh, sort of come from an outcasted background and I'm learning more and more it's more so their mind and the way that we all think the way that we have to think about things of questioning authority not taking everything at face value and then I'm going to find out later how it is and then uh, you know I guess at, at younger ages that sort of outcasts a lot of us but uh yeah, that's. I guess that's that's my question. I should I should ask more and more people that, and I don't I don't think about it often enough to say like uh, you know where where did all this start for you? I guess. Um, my so my rational, what started me on my journey to my philosophical journey to where I am sure. now. Um, loose change. Loose change was uh, my uh, red pill. Uh, I, I went down the whole truth there. Uh, um, rabbit hole for a few years uh, questioning like you know what the government's done and you know I didn't want to believe it because I used to be like a conservative patriotic American you know and I'm like the government could have done 9-11 that's ridiculous and someone showed me a loose change I remember spending like a year or two like trying to research stuff just to 
prove my friend wrong. Like this is that's you know that that could not have happened. They wouldn't have killed thousands of of our own people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, the government's evil, and, and it's one of those things where you go down that rabbit hole so long. It's like okay, government is evil. You know, I know this. Uh, now what? And I kind of started to discover liberty after uh, going down that train. So I went from like the whole 9-11, loose change, uh, Alex Jones type of thing. Kind of, then I got introduced to Ron Paul, Stefan Molyneux, Adam Kokesh, uh, Tom Woods, that kind of stuff. And it just kept going farther and farther down. That's, yeah, that's uh, pretty much, and, and that's me and my me and my hetero life mate Robert here. Uh, <laughs> we, you know, we both agreed that we were kind of like the 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 floodgates opened and everything was poured onto us. And then it was like, okay, we had to slowly like back out of some of this stuff because it was like, it's all real, man. Everything's out there, you know. And then we had to sort of go, okay, well, the let's. Reptiles are coming. Right, yeah, the reptiles are coming. But we had to, you know, we had to kind of back out of some of this stuff and assess this issue further and that issue further to have a more clear, concise, uh, you know, notion on the deal. But it was. It, you know that at least that's where I come from, but you know we're all I don't know we're all outcasts, just people that just think differently, I guess you know just, yeah. it, it takes it takes balls going against the status quo. It takes balls to have to say something different, and we have to be a hundred and ten percent right when we say it. That's the worst part about it. Just throwing out things like ideas and conversations and questions is is hard enough that you have to be a hundred percent right in the stuff that you present forward for questioning <laughs> and it's hard, it's hard to break that indoctrination that people go through i mean it took it took me six years you know it took me five six years to break through all that to get to where i am now and what's really crazy is meeting um natives here uh there's um there's an activist out of Keaton uh, named Graham Colson, and he's. I had a conversation with him, uh, and he's like, "Yeah, I didn't even know who Ron Paul was. I was introduced via Free Keen when they're having a pot smoke down protest, and I was hanging out with Pete Air well before I ever knew who Ron Paul was. I'm like, oh my god! Like I, I wish I was introduced at this level from the beginning, you know? Yeah. Like I went through like five, six years just to get here, and here he is. Just, you know, he has no idea how lucky he was introduced at this, you know." This level of the rabbit hole, like immediately, straight off the bat, and that you know, happens. That, to, yeah, it just you know, it's like I said, it's all walks of life and people that are into different stuff, and you never know how someone's gonna. You know, that's the other good thing about being uh, centrally geographically located is, uh, you know, y y you really take in a lot from a lot of different people and those those types of things are good to be had we don't get to do it that often down here where you have that many handfuls of people just hanging out maybe having some brews and having a good time and talking about stuff you know um our, our buddy riaz that, that that came up there a handful of months ago um, well, we, Riaz, i am rooming with riaz what where the where the hell is he He's, he's doing his Agra's taxi cab service right now. Tell he's, tell he's him yelling. tell him to quit being a fucking douchebag and get a hold of us, dude. Uh, and Rob's over here, dude. He's rooming with Riaz. I miss that son of a bitch so much. What I, a I'm in his dick! Right now. <laughs> what a dick! Because <laughs> yeah. I I reached out to him. I said because he's our buddy from down here that went to go be a part of this, and I said. I, I mentioned him on a comment the other day when I was supporting the Indiegogo campaign. I was like, hey, tell all your free state buddies to help us out, man. You know, like, we need help, too. It's not all free talk live up there. I well, mean, well, not just that. The very purpose of, of our documentary is to make it known what the free state project is, what the conversation that's taking place up there is, and how different people can all agree that freedom is good. And And that's why I really think that the free state project – you know, I'm not saying donate to us, but should uh, be. I am. <laughs> well, trip might be, but should definitely be in support of such a project to try and get get Porkfest into the living room of uh, uh, of a, of a average Americans across the United States. I 110 percent agree. Like one thing, uh, I would love to see Riaz do a. Uh, he needs to do like his own like videos or whatnot. Like he has a. 
the fact that he's dri he's driving like the who's who around of the delivery movement all the time. The fact that there's enough people here that he can actually run a business of an agorist taxi service and you know completely make bank and is make that what he's doing, that. Robert? Did That's you know what he's that? Doing. He's, I barely ever see it because he's always driving people around for rides, like going to different events and stuff like An that. An agorist taxi service. That's what he's doing. He just drives everybody everywhere. That's his business, and he's making money <laughs> off of it. He's, a like, Prius he's hiring out here. help. He's, for Liberty Forum, he's actually going to have other people working for him. That's how big his business is exploding. That's great, man. Nah, yeah, whatever works. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. You know what I mean? That's the kind of stuff that bears good fruit when you're when you're a part of something like that, and just to just to you know think that up is fucking brilliant. But uh, we're gonna get on, man. Uh, anything you want to say in closing? Anything uh, going on up there? We need to be a part of. And hey, of course, as always, as I extend out to everybody, whatever you need, we're always here. So you know. We're available. <laughs> well, uh, my my goal right now, um, <clears throat> like personally, I uh, I want to get my feet wet in a different a uh, few different things. Hopefully, uh, with some activism going on and whatnot. But my big goal is kind of like how with your sh uh, the documentary you want to make about talking about what you know what these people are like and whatnot. I kind of want to do the same thing with people here, um, just talking about the culture, the community, uh, kind of documenting everything. Because I'll be honest. Walking through like the different activist centers and meeting all these people and going to these different events and like seeing new movers after me and I've only been here like two weeks. I feel like I'm walking through history and I, I feel like it's almost my responsibility to like document and talk about what's going on because it needs to be told. It's a story that needs to be told. I, I couldn't agree more. That's you know that that that's pretty much the bottom line of what what we're doing. So. Uh, like I said, anything you ever need, any project that you ever get up started, uh, get a hold of us. We'll get you back on any old time you want. And uh, you're always great, man. And we'll talk soon. And good luck out there, I guess. <laughs> Have fun settling in. <laughs> oh, I will. All right, man. We'll talk soon. Gotcha. All right, peace. All right, later, man. All right, there goes Rob Mathias newfound free stater <laughs>